Bohemian Rhapsody? No, even better. It's just for you by Lil Pitchy. Stream it now. Link in the description. What a voice. Better than Freddie Mercury, you say? I didn't say it, you did. Today, we're once again looking at famous singers who never had a number one. Demi Lovato. So sorry, not sorry was not number one. This is a sick song, though. This is also a pretty cool music video. Visually very pleasing. This is the one with all the weird talky stuff. I wonder if they sometimes just ruin the audio in a music video so that you'll stream it on Spotify or Apple Music or whatever instead. <laughs> Sorry Not Sorry was a big hit in 2017, but it only reached number six and it's still her best charting song. It's funny because everyone knows who Demi Lovato is, but she's never had number one. Have all the other Disney stars had that? Have Jonas Brothers had a number one? They have. Sucker was number one. The Jonas Brothers are more successful right now than ever, or at least in 2019. And yeah, Miley Cyrus must have, right? Yeah, but only one number one there as well just wrecking ball there's a lot of people out there who have not had a number one hit or only get it one time how about taylor swift or something yeah taylor has had seven that is massive oh bruce springsteen never had a number one huh he's so legendary though what is iconic on stage. I actually think he gets overlooked a lot. I know he holds a guitar a lot, but he definitely has a charisma that is similar in some ways to Freddie Mercury, I think, on stage. Rock legend Bruce Springsteen has never had a number one hit. He has seen dozens of songs reach the top 10, including Dancing in the Dark, which held steady at number two for four weeks behind Princess When Doves Cry. But the hit from Springsteen's Born in the USA album is the closest he's come to topping the charts. We should give him a number one now, just to say thank you. Here we got Zed, never a number one for Zed. I think Zed is like the best EDM producer. Take a seat. Oh, this was awesome. Sat on the stairs, stay leave. The cabinets are bare, and I'm on a way. I just realized this is not Zed. This is the other one. Marin Morris. For a little while, it looked like Zed. And then I was like, no, this is uh, what seems like a female. It's filmed like it's a live performance. It's like a little bit weird quality. Why don't you just make Here we have Zed's clock again. I'm losing my mind. Just standing there, being cool. He dresses really well nowadays. I think he used to be a nerd. Zed isn't the singer, but he has had great impact on the electronic music scene, but never had a number one. His best charted song, The Middle, reached number five. He produced Bieber's Beauty and the Beat though, right? Together with Max Martin, wasn't that number one? No, <laughs> it hit number five. Never mind. I guess I just like Zed more than the average person. I think he should have had five number ones at least. By the way, welcome back to another daily video. My name is Joe from Rumi Official, and here's a meme from the subreddit. Every single day. Is it, is it real you? It is. Rumi's daily videos. Now get in these arms. Oh. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. I know a lot of you come around every freaking day, which is insane and not something I've ever expected. So thank you. Now let's move on. Here we have the Pussycat Dolls. Never had a number one. Oh yeah, this is the boyfriend song. I always talk about how these lyrics are unlikable and they are unlikable. <laughs> it's like, hey, leave your girlfriend for me. Don't you wish your girlfriend was hot like me? No. Is there any scenario where it's okay to say that? I'm trying to think. Maybe if it's a bad girlfriend, like she's also mean. Even if you're hotter than the girlfriend, saying this stuff gives you an unattractive personality. So, eh. Anyway, the legendary group, legendary, let's be, okay, they're, they're famous, but were they legendary? Has had a total of four top 10 songs, but no number one with their best placement at number two with Duncha. Okay. They got Nick Jonas. No number one for Nick Jonas, but for the Jonas Brothers. Even though I know you love me, can't help it. I I always liked his voice. Now I'm puffing my chest. I'm getting ready to face you. Can call me upset. What was that Zoom about? Sorry, I'm talking a lot about music videos today, but things are not moving in the right speed behind him. And then it just randomly zooms in here. And I don't I don't know what's over there. I mean no disrespect. It's my brain to be hellish. I still get you. Damn. 
saying the K-pop music videos are way better at CGI than we are. I guess this is a little bit on purpose, but it's still in that uncanny valley. While Nick has reached number one with the Jonas Brothers, he has yet to snatch the top spot as a solo artist. The song Jealous peaked at number seven. Oh, boo freaking who? Only got a number one with my band, not as a solo artist. The biggest tragedy in the world. Oh, here we got Lil Pump. Never had number one. Gucci Gang wasn't number one. Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang. Gucci I'm expecting Gucci number Gucci two. This was so big and terrible. I guess it was one of those things that only the kids liked, though. Like, your parents would not go out and buy Gucci Gang, which is a little bit of a disadvantage. Both kids and adults like Adele, and that's why she could break pretty much every record ever. Rather go and buy ball mains. Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang. Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang. Hey, can you say Gucci Gang? Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang. Thanks. That beat kind of slaps, though. The controversial rapper Lil Pump has never reached number one. However, in 2017, he was very close, peaking at Julia Michael. I'm jealous. This is such a good song. She was a songwriter before this. She when writes for a lot of artists down. still, I think. When I'm high, I don't come down. No, you don't judge me. Such a hit. If you did, baby, I did you There's like nothing going on, but it's still awesome. Cause we got the kind of love it takes to suffer. Yeah, I got issues. And one of them is how bad I need to. That's a little bit of an awkward phrase there. And one of them is how much I need you. It doesn't really stack up rhythmically, at least not like she sings it. It feels like it's just slobbery all over the place rhythmically, but it works because it's a strong lyric line. So yeah, it's cool. Julia has had several number ones as a songwriter with hits like Sorry with Justin Bieber, but never as an artist. Her hit issues peaked at number 11. Here we got Creedence Clearwater Revival. I listened to these as a kid, but I think I was being retro by listening to them as a kid and I am old. So they are even older guys. Oh, classic song. If you haven't heard Proud Mary, you should not be proud. Or Cold Mary. Love it. That blues note, that proud. That distortion and tone, I love that. sharp kind of standard mid-range singing it's kind of like the lowest high notes that exists i would say maybe f actually you can get pretty intense tone pretty much anywhere but it's kind of like the passaggio that goes into the high registry of a male voice the band was always the bridesmaid but never the bride <laughs> the group has had the most number two peaking hits without ever hitting number one they reached number two with proud mary bad moon rising green river traveling band who'll stop the rain and looking out my back door slash as long as i can see the light we got love he's never had a number one he does amazing Amazing music though. To be honest, oh, so good. In New York City. Apparently he wrote this with Troy Sivan. Do not know who I am. Does Troy sing on this? Good long as you're here with me. I like me better when I'm with you. Hey. I like me better when I'm with you. I like me better when I'm with you. Wait, what happened? Do they have Benjamin Button disease? That's crazy. With 1 billion 182 million streams on Spotify, I Like Me Better only reached number 27 and Love hasn't reached higher since. What? That's crazy. He must have been unlucky with the timing. That's what that is. Here we got five seconds of summer. They are a little bit of a niche band. It's pretty rocky. Their type of singing isn't super in right now, I would say, or music style, but they have been getting popular. So I could see a number one in their future, maybe. Are you going to choose the blue pill or the blue pill? Cause you made me believe you're mine. You pushing, you pushing up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this music video doesn't have them in them. We watched this before on the channel. They had a tour music video first with just footage from them touring and everyone hated it. But then they just made a nice music video that didn't have Five Seconds of Summer in it. Is that better? I guess it is. Like One Direction, Five Seconds of Summer has never reached the top spots on the chart, not even for a second. Their song Youngblood managed to reach number seven. I guess there is just something about boy bands that everyone can't get behind. I think a lot of guys specifically don't want to buy or listen to a song by a boy band, even if it's awesome. A lot of Five Seconds of Summers and One Direction songs, I think, if they weren't a boy band, might have hit number one. Here we got Led Zeppelin. I'm gonna give you my love. This drummer, John Bonham, is like super famous. One of the most iconic drummers ever. Oh, 
Okay, don't don't do that pan thing. Early music production when they just figured out that they could do like cool stuff with panning is the worst. We listen to the Beatles records where like the drums are all the way to the right or whatever, and there's this symphonic orchestra all the way to the left. It's frustrating. I wish they would remix a lot of this stuff. This thing that goes like that kind of makes me feel a bit nauseous to be honest. Led Zeppelin is one of the biggest bands of all time and has had seven number one albums. They're the second best selling artist of all time in the United States. Despite that, they never reached the number one on the Hot 100. They came close with Whole Lot of Love that reached number four. F's in the chat for Led Zeppelin. Imagine if a Zeppelin was made of lead guys, it wouldn't be able to fly. Here we got Rascal Flatts, famous mainly, I think, for their Cars soundtrack, but they also had some really strong songs. I can take a few tears now and then and just let them out. I'm it's so well produced. Even though this is pretty old, just everything is so crisp and sounds so good. I pretend I'm okay, but that's not what gets me. What hurts the most? Gotta love the country. What? It's so over the top, and I love it. His voice control is unbelievable. The country band has had many big hits during the years, but they are still missing a number one. Their song, What Hurts the Most, reached number six in 2006. Number six in six, that's 18. Here we got Alessia Cara. I ain't got no business here, but since my friends are here, I just came to kick it. Is it Alessia Cara or Alessia? Let me know in the comments. Very important to figure out. She's tiny. Is she shorter than that person sitting on a chair? Maybe it's a bar stool, but still. So you can go back. Amazing voice. Party, I'll be here. Is that KSI? No, yeah. <laughs> kind of looked like him for a second, okay? He always wears the bandana and things too. I'll be over here. This is cool. I wonder how they filmed this. Almost looks like a photo. Oh, that's a cool transition. If you ask yourself when you're at a party what you're doing here, you can go home. It's allowed. Maybe that's what she did. Alicia Cara's best charting single is her song Here, which reached number five in 2016. Here we have this script. They never had a number one either. They were so iconic. I'm still alive, but I'm barely breathing. This song was such a massive hit. This must be number two or whatever. To a guy that I don't believe in. Oh, his voice is also unbelievable. Oh. I got time while she got freedom. Feels a little bit sting inspired. I breaks, no, I don't break even. That voice. Oh, that's good. I love that too. The little distortion on the uh, falsetto. Pieces. It does it so nice. The script's classic break even is still the best charting song, reaching number 12. That is not fair. There's many people who have had number ones that shouldn't, and then the script. How could it not be in the script that they should get number one? <laughs> Here we got La Nadella Ray. She's never had number one, huh? How about Summertime Sadness? What did that hit? Yeah, that is her biggest. You go, Lana is one of those people who probably lives in slow motion in real life. It feels like I just think of slow motion when I see it. This whole video seems to be in slow motion. Just this dreamy, hazy thing. It's interesting how well they kind of hide that this is a straight pop song with the production because that's something that Selena Gomez would do in a track too, easily. Like, I got that summertime, summertime, sadness, summertime, some. Like, it's super vocal choppy, super repetitive. If you heard it in another type of song, you'd be like, oh, going for a hook right there, very repetitive. But for some reason, with this more credible production, it feels different. Lana has had 13 songs on the chart over the years, but sadly, her biggest hit, Summertime Sadness, came close, but ended up peaking on the number six spot. Too bad. Lana Del Slay, queen. I should stop making jokes. You got J. Cole. I'm not super familiar with him, but oh, he's never had number one. Uh. I'm making a list, I'm checking it twice and I'm getting I know this song though. The real one's been dying, the fake ones is lit, the game is off balance, I'm Sick. back on my the bitly is dirty, my sneakers is dirty, but that's how I like it. You all on my I'm all in my bag. It's hard as it get. I do not powder. I might take So sick. The vibe of that song is just unbelievable. So freaking nice. Cole is one of music's most reliable LP sellers at this point, having now topped the Billboard 200 albums chart with all five of his studio albums to date. What? But his success on the Hot 100 has been more tempered. He has had five songs 
songs on the top 10, but his best placement is with his song Middle Child reaching number four. Very sad. Crying for Mr. Cole. Oh, and here we have Missy Elliott. <laughs> We talked about what that is backwards in this video. It's really cool. It's one of my favorite backwards phrases in any song. That's a cool dance and music video. I like that a lot. The clothes are kind of cool too, even though they're dated, obviously. It's like kind of fun. She's a rap superstar, but Missy Elliott hasn't made it past the number two spot. In 2002, Work It spent 10 weeks in second place behind Eminem's Lose Yourself. In 2005, One Two Step also spent 10 weeks in second place. This 10 weeks streak is tied with the foreigners waiting for a girl like you for the longest time a song has been second without making it to number one. Oh, that sucks okay guys you can get more music commentary videos you can get more music vs videos and yeah sometimes you just will never hit number one you will never do it and that's okay i will never be the number one swede on youtube by the way that will never happen bye bye <laughs>